So the first thing you're going to ask is, Matt, where's the East 8 videos that you should be working on? Here's the thing. The episode I was supposed to release had a lot of audio issues, to the point where all my recordings are completely scrapped. So while I work on that to try to get that fixed and up going again, I thought, let's start another LP because I really want to kick my ass to get into gear. The 20th anniversary of Kingdom Hearts is this year. This series is 20 years old. And somehow, well, I tried doing it a couple of years before, but I think I'm actually ready now. The Kingdom Hearts series is one of my favorite series of all time. In any gaming, in any media, honestly. I love it. I love it a lot. And the fact that we may get a new game this year, who knows? I, I want to get myself ready. I figured the best way to do that was, well, play through all the Kingdom Hearts games, of course. Then I thought, what if I record it? Here we are today. Welcome to my brand new LP of Let's Play Kingdom Hearts Final Mix. Final Mix adds a bunch of things to the game, which I'll be talking about as we go through the entire adventure. The first thing, though, is difficulty. Now, I have a really hard time picking difficulty in the LPs that I apparently want to do. With Kingdom Hearts, I have decided that we're going to play on Final Mix difficulty. This is the normal difficulty, and if you're wondering why not play it on Proud if you're so used to this game and you've played it so much, here's the thing. Proud Mode is fun, but not for an LP. It's really challenging, you'll die a lot, and a lot of it is just the stuff that really you can't deal with. You're just going to get hit and that's it. I feel like Final Mix brings a really good mixture of both hard and easy, and I feel like it's perfect for LP purposes. Now, I'm going to be putting it to manual, because I feel like that's how I should play. I've always played with manual camera, and I'll put vibration on, because why not? So these are the settings we're going to be playing with, and if you are wondering, is this going to be 100% LP? No. There's a lot of side stuff to Kingdom Hearts, but a lot of it is grindy, and I feel like if I put that into episodes, it would just take way too long. But, we'll talk about the bonuses and stuff as we go through the adventure. I have a plan for it, but for now, I think there's only one thing to do. It's uh, skip the opening, because, <laughs> well, copyright, and then we start our adventure of Kingdom Hearts Final Mix. I hope you all will join me as we set sail. So much to do. So little time. Take your time. Don't be afraid. The door is still shut. Now, step forward. Can you do it? Use the left stick to move, tilt it slightly to walk, and tilt it all the way to run. Power sleeps within you. If you give it form, it will give you strength. Choose well. And oh boy, does that disembodied voice mean it choose well. This is quite the controversial thing in Kingdom Hearts 1. At least amongst the fans on Reddit and stuff like that. Which, you know, is always a great place to start. So, you are probably thinking when you were a kid that these choices don't matter. Maybe you remember picking the rod and you get an extra MP point because it makes sense. You picked the magic one. That's not entirely true. I have here, and you're going to have to excuse the clicking because I'm going to have to use my mouse for this, a full table that is up on GameFAQs right now. The author will be credited in the video and the link will be found in the description to where I'm going to get all this information. And if you are wondering, what is the difference between picking and removing one of these weapons? 
Well, for starters, there are actual slight stat increases and decreases depending on what you pick. For example, if you pick the rod and you sacrifice the shield, you may have some of the base stats you'll find out throughout whatever decisions you pick, except your defense will be 1, but your MP will be 3. But if you were to take the rod and sacrifice the sword, for example, uh, your strength would go down to 3, where if you sacrifice the shield, it would be 5. It would be five. Uh, but your defense will still stay at 3, and that's kind of like a give and take. They're the minimal, the, uh, these minimal, as you will, stat changes that will affect Sora's level 1. And by the end game, when you reach level 100, if you choose to go that far, you will end up with a lot of the same stats that you would, no matter what you picked, with slight differences here and there. I have seen some arguments that say it doesn't matter with stats, other than picking the rod gives you more magic, and I think, like, picking the shield gives you two more item slots, which we'll all get into a little bit later. I have been trying to figure out what to start with, and personally, Having more MP is cool, but I don't really care. The thing that I'm, that matters most to me is abilities. Because, yes, if you pick one of these things, it will affect what abilities you get throughout the game. If, for instance, the first ability you would get if I picked the sword, let's say, is Sliding Dash. A very useful tool to help you get onto enemies' tails. If you pick up the shield, you get the ability Slapshot, which basically just lets you hit enemies that are really up close. And if you pick the wand, you get Stun Impact, which is a really good AoE that just stuns the enemies surrounding you. Every single ability you get in the game will be in a certain order depending on what you pick. And some of these are good, like if you pick the shield, you get guard really early, whereas if you pick the sword, you get it way down the line. And like I said, if you pick the rod, you get more magic, but a lot of your cool combo stuff will come in a little bit later, but you still get some beneficial abilities in the beginning. Realistically, the one that hurts you the most is the sword. You get scan early, but a lot of your defensive stuff won't come in until a lot later. Or you pick the shield, maybe you won't get a lot of the cool combat abilities right away, but you get stuff that helps you immensely, like guard, scan, leaf brace, or second chance. All these awesome abilities that'll help you if you're playing on Proud Note especially. So I had to figure out what I wanted to choose. And here's the thing. Magic is really good in Kingdom Hearts 1. It's got a lot of potential. But personally, I'm a Garden Fiend, so I'm going with the shield. The power of the Guardian, kindness to aid friends, a shield to repel all. Is this the power you seek? It sure is. Your path is set. Now, what will you give up in exchange? Now, like I said, this is going to affect some minor stats here and there, and I haven't really decided what I want to get rid of. The thing is, if I get rid of the magic thing, I'll get some pretty good strength, and I will basically keep all my stats, except for AP. AP will be reduced to 1 if I'm both reading the chart correctly and even remember correctly, because I feel like that is something I've had to deal with. So, for the sake of this route, I'm going to sacrifice the sword, just so I can get those little bit early in-game stuff. The power of the warrior, invincible courage, a sword of terrible destruction. You give up this power? Yeah. You've chosen the power of the guardian. You've given up the power of the warrior. Is this the form you choose? I say it is. Whoa. Oh, by the way, I should mention, I won't be talking throughout every cutscene. I will mute myself when there are voices on screen or cutscenes that I deem important. Which is basically all of them now that I think about it. But the introduction cutscenes in this game actually have no vocals. It's all silent. It's all text. And as you can see, Sora is making his way through the next level. At least I think that's what they're insinuating. You've gained the power to fight. Well, we unlock the command menu, but there's not much to do now. So let's say we follow the text box and press X to attack. 
All right, you've got it. Use this power to protect yourself and others. The green gauge displays your hit points or your HP, or if you'd much rather, health. If you run out of HP, you'll be taken to the continue screen. Basically, you get a game over. The blue gauge shows your magic points. Magic is, fair, is still a mystery to you, and so it is. There'll be times we have to fight. Keep your light burning strong. Whoa, what are these strange little creatures? I mean, obviously, I know what they are. But you don't have to worry about that right now. Well, let's follow what the game said and press X to attack. Defeating one, we'll move on to the next cutscene. You gain experience by defeating enemies, or EXP. With enough EXP, you gain a level. Furthermore, defeated enemies sometimes leave items behind. As you see, they dropped a little HP orbs. That's exactly what they were. You can take these items by walking up to them. Different items can do different things, like restore HP or MP. So those green little orbs we saw, they heal HP. Behind you! Generally, you're, you'll automatically target the nearest enemy, but you can lock onto a specific target by pressing R1. Lock on will appear in the upper left corner of the screen while you're locked onto a target. Locking onto a target limits the actions available to you, especially against other targets. Press R1 again to release the target lock. So, yeah, targeting, uh, you know, locking onto an enemy basically just, okay, well, <laughs> basically just lets you focus on one enemy. Now, there is a little thing I want to talk about with Sora's a bit like combat status here. Oh, by the way, our main character is Sora. We will learn that very shortly. I really don't feel like that's a spoiler. Plus, he's in Smash now. I mean, come on, we all know that now. I'm pretty sure you know this character whether you like to or not. It's okay, kid. I think you're okay. Hmm. Seems like there's a door. Let's check it out. This is a field icon. It pops up whenever a special command is available. When examine pops up, you can press the triangle button to examine the object in front of you. This is a god dang blessed blessed quality of life feature i am so glad they added so this wasn't in kingdom hearts 1 originally if you wanted to examine something or even interact with anything on the game you had to scroll through your command bar all the way here which means you couldn't open chests you couldn't open doors you couldn't interact with anything while in battle because while you're in battle it'll lock out certain things that you can use but, with the HD remake, since I guess they had to bring some stuff over while com like trying to remake this game for an HD remaster, they decided to implement the feature that came into Kingdom Hearts 2, pressing triangle to interact with stuff. And it is such a blessing. I can't open it. Hmm. The triangle button in the command menu turns into various commands, such as opening a chest. Oh, I didn't do the speedrun trick. <laughs> you can push large crates. Okay. Okay. Well, what else can you do with a large crate? I mean, it's kind of big and... Oh, you can also smash him? Don't mind if I do. Sometimes destroying objects heals items. You could take these items by walking up to them. Got a potion. Use them in the item command. Or with the items command, I should say. You can lock on to objects as well as enemies. While locked on, press L2 to switch your focus between available targets. This is very useful in combat. You can basically switch between what enemy or what object you want to have targeting. Now there is a simple thing we can do. We can just simply throw and break the barrel. Or I could try to do this. That's very difficult to do. I, I cannot stress enough. That's a little speedrun tech. Uh, for those who don't know, I actually used to run this game on beginner mode. I did exactly one run of it, and I'm proud of it. I kind of want to go back. I'm not going to lie. Let's examine the door to see if it opens now. Ugh, I love the 
music change. It's it's so good. Hold on. The door won't open just yet. First, tell me more about yourself. Press the touchpad button to for, to, for first person view. You can use the left stick to look around. Press the touchpad button again to return to standard view. Yeah, Kingdom Hearts 1 has a first person mode, and I really don't know why. It, it kind of makes sense in Kingdom Hearts 2, because you can move around, but in this, it's just to look at stuff. Which is, I mean, kind of interesting. We can look at the water, we can try to see out into the horizon, we can, uh... You know, see the weird island we seem to be on and if you really want to you can just uh well we can walk up and the talk to command will be available to press triangle to talk to nearby people uh you know you could just walk up and uh look at look at look a walk his bandana yeah that's walk by the way from yes from final fantasy 10 there is an invisible barrier blocking us from exploring yeah i hate to see it goddamn video games so these are final fantasy characters uh you know adding to the very normality of this game let's talk to titus what are you afraid of or what are you so afraid of so you can if you want to give the answers based on how you feel but you should know that each answer here will determine a certain exp route that you will be taking throughout the game now if you are wondering what in the hell i am talking about it's kind of simple. So in this game, there are three different routes that you can take. The Dusk Route, the Midday Route, or the Dawn Route. What this will basically do is, depending on which answers you pick, you will take a route. And what this does is it'll basically change the amount of EXP you will need to level up Sora, our main character. Now, if you take the Dusk Route, which is the first one and considered the hardest, you will basically... Uh, have a harder time level leveling up in the beginning but after you get past level 50 i think or 55 i don't remember where the exact nasty the game becomes so much easier to level up like the the amount of exp you'll need will actually be lessened the more you level up if you pick the midday route it'll be a standard playthrough it'll be the normal amount of exp that you need to level up your character and it's all good however if you pick the dawn route it's actually the opposite of the dusk route it'll be so much easier to level up in early game you will barely need like any exp to get to like level 50 or level 45 but the minute you pass that threshold it'll actually become a lot harder to level up the further you get in the game and the higher you level up sora it is going to be a lot harder to get that maximum level all the way to 100. uh this can in if I remember correctly, it's level 40, but, you know, I digress. This could really depend on the player. For the sake of a LP route, I think I'm just going to pick Midday. I've always played the Midday route. I played the other routes here and there, and you can notice a difference, but, uh, yeah. So these questions are, while well, you think they're ph philosophical and asking you a certain question about yourself and all that kind of stuff, it's really just picking a route to see which way you're going to go. You're afraid of being different. You want friendship. You want to broaden your horizons. Oh, I gotta hit X. <laughs> I always forget that. Your adventure begins at midday. Keep a steady pace and you'll come through fine. That, like, little sentence basically explains the EXP route that you're gonna be getting. For me, that sounds good. The day you will open the door is both far off and very near. The music is picking up. Also, fans of the series may look at the stained glasses that we've been fighting on, and you may have noticed a pattern. I'm not going to get into that pattern, as I will probably do LPs of those other games as well, and I'll talk about it in the future. But if you've played the other games, I think you can kind of see what I'm hinting at. It's kind of a neat little attention to detail, and God, I hope it was. I hope it was all planned. Press the options button to open the menu screen. In the main menu, you can do things like view your inventory and status or configure your game settings. However, you cannot open the menu during battle. That's pretty standard, honestly. 
I think a lot of games are like that. Uh-oh. Whip out your shield, boy. We got some enemies to fight. This is your first true battle. There's going to be no tutorial. They're just going to come at you and you need to fight. So, I want to talk about Sora's combat a little bit while we're here. Here is a standard ground combo, if I can land it. Well, I missed. Whoops. Come on. Okay, hang on. There we go. It is a three-hit swing, and you can see it has a pretty wide radius. Let's see if I can land an aerial combo. As you can see, it's pretty close to the enemy, and honestly, it hits pretty well, but you're obviously focusing it on a single target. Kingdom Hearts, and I believe this is the only game in the series to do it, but I could be wrong. I'll have to look into it. I only know this because I've learned the speedrun a bit. Kingdom Hearts is a very interesting mechanic to its battle system, and that is there's actually a rhythm to swinging your weapon. If you are just to mash the X button, like most people, and myself included, did when they played this game for the first time, and any of the other Kingdom Hearts games, because that's the meme of them, uh... It'll do your standard combo, but some things will be a bit weird. It'll be a bit slower, but, I mean, that's just kind of what you're used to. However, if you press the X button or the attack button, if, the circle button if you're playing in, in Japanese, um, at the right time, you'll actually perform your combo faster. I believe this also works on ground combos, but you can notice it significantly with air combos. I'll try to pull it off in the next fight, because we will be heading to a fight soon, to kind of show off what I'm talking about, but... It's a really cool feature that they didn't really need to add, but it's really neat. Anyway, let's step on the glowing circle. This is a save point. Touch save points to recover HP and MP. Press the triangle button to open the save menu when save appears. Be sure to save your progress before quitting the game. It's a good idea to save often. If anything goes wrong, you can then load your save data and resume from there. There's a very good reason the game tells you that. Uh, sometimes the game's checkpoints can be a little, a little mean. Uh, there's some stuff that you'll have to do. Maybe you'll make have to go through a couple of rooms again. It can be pretty annoying. So you're probably thinking, Matt, you're gonna save right now, right? Uh, no, this is an LP recording, silly. If I save right now, I could corrupt everything and then I'll have to redo everything. We don't want to do that. What we want to do though is I want to open the options menu. You can see how long we've been playing for, which you know, it's an LP. You know, I'm gonna be a little. A little bit of a stickler for details and talk a lot. We got the Dream Shield weapon, but we got nothing that we can equip. Uh, it, so it seems we got no abilities. It shared, what the heck is he gonna... You got Customize, which we'll talk about a little bit later. You got your statuses. Like you see, I have only 4 EXP to level up soon. Uh, here are the like strength stats and stuff that you can go through. Uh, like I said, if, if I were to choose other stuff, this would probably change. Like, I think, Let me see how many... No, we can. Okay. Uh, config is pretty normal. You can change stuff if you... You know need to change anything i'm pretty okay uh honestly uh, i play with basic settings and i've never really had a problem so there's only thing one uh bleh, bleh, bleh. there's only one thing to do and that's to walk up this weird it's not really a spiral staircase it's just a wavy one i guess i never noticed these disappeared before that's funny <laughs> wait did they just... oh they do it's so cool i didn't notice that all right sorry i learn new stuff about this game all the time Ooh, what's going on here? I recognize this Disney character. The closer you get to the light, the greater your shadow becomes. This was so this was in a trailer and it was so cool. Like this is what made me want to play the game. <laughs> but don't be afraid. And don't forget. Oh, this is so cool. I love this stuff so much. Okay, so we got our very first boss fight. This is an enemy called Darkseid. I believe it's the name of it anyway. Darkseid will punch the ground, and when he does, he will summon these weird little enemies that we've been fighting throughout this entire time. You can lock onto them and defeat them if you want to get them out of your way. Realistically, they don't really do much to you. You can pretty much go through the battle without having to worry about them, but we are close to leveling up, so let's try to get that level up real quick. Boom, there we go. We got a strength increase. Awesome. 
as you can see, it's very difficult to hit him from here. You kind of have to wait until he swings his arm. And if you're wondering, hey, that head looks like a pretty good hit point. Can you hit that? Yes, you can. And if you do, you get something called tech experience points. He'll shoot these lasers at you, so I will try to climb the body without getting hit. And here's a mashing air combo. And here's me pressing. Oh, okay, I messed up. <laughs> and here's me. Uh, here's me pressing it. No, okay, I missed. <laughs> Anyway, you can hit the head to get the extra experience points. Uh, it's not really needed, but you know, it's extra EXP. What's, what's wrong with that? Especially if you're playing like the Dawn route and you want to get some... So as you can see, like the animation looked probably a lot faster. And that's because I'm trying to time the hits. Uh, it's not, like I said, that is absolutely not needed. It is, you can easily just play through the game, just mashing the button. But yeah, sometimes that extra little things will help out here and there. With all the tech points are beginning, I'm wondering if we're actually going to level up soon. Okay, I'm not going to bother. Oh, he's getting mad. <laughs> he roared. This is actually the longest I stayed in this boss fight because I never really had to explain a lot before. But here you go. He's going to bend his arms down again. You can hit the hands if you want to, but darn it. I'm going for the head. Alright, well, we'll hit the hands now. Whoops. That can sometimes happen with this boss. Like, you can try to do your aerial comp. I'm trying to... There we go. You can, like, try to hit your aerial combo, but you'll just land on his hands. It happens all the time. Slow-mo slice! We got a couple of little ups there. I didn't see what the stats were, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. And there we go. You technically fought your first boss fight. What an amazing opening this game has. I... But don't be afraid. I'll freak about it sometime later. You hold the mightiest weapon of all. So don't forget. You are the one who will open the door. <laughs> Give me a break, Kyrie. So are you, lazy bum. I knew that I'd find you snoozing down here. No, this huge black thing swallowed me up. I couldn't breathe, I couldn't... Ow. Are you still dreaming? It wasn't a dream. Or was it? I don't know. What was that place? So bizarre. Yes, yeah, sure. Say, Kyrie, what was your hometown like? You know, where you grew up? I've told you before. I don't remember. Nothing at all? Nothing. You ever want to go back? Hmm, well, I'm happy here. Really? But you know, I wouldn't mind going to see it. I'd like to see it too. Along with any other worlds out there. I want to see them all. So what are we waiting for? Hey, aren't you guys forgetting about me? So, I guess I'm the only one working on the raft. Ah. <laughs> and you're just as lazy as he is. <laughs> so you know this. Okay, we'll finish it together. I'll race you. Huh? What? Are you kidding? <laughs> Ready? Go! So, we are out of Sora's crazy dream, or whatever that was, and we are on the island 
well, we are on the island, Destiny Island. And that, my dear friends, is where we are going to call it. That is going to be all for today's episode. I truly hope you guys are ready. I'm so excited to play through Kingdom Hearts 1 again. It's been a long time coming. You know what? We're finally going to do it. We're finally going to play through this entire game. And I cannot wait to bring this entire adventure to you. Remember, if you guys like the video, make sure to like, subscribe. Let me know what you thought. Things I could do better. Things I could do worse. And, you know, just let me know how everything hangs out. Until then, guys, I will see you all in the next episode. Take it easy. Take care. Stay safe. And I'll see you all next time. Take it easy, everyone.